Hello and welcome to part three of Evaluate's video series on evaluation, the secret sauce in your ATE proposal, a video series for individuals applying to the National Science Foundation's Advanced Technological Education Program. This video series accompanies the August 2019 webinar. Check out our first two videos to understand why evaluation is essential in an ATE proposal and how to choose and identify an evaluator. My name is Lissa Wilson Becho, and I work for Evaluate, located at Western Michigan University. Evaluate is the evaluation hub for the National Science Foundation's Advanced Technological Education Program, or ATE for short. Although Evaluate is funded by NSF to provide guidance on evaluation matters, we do not speak for NSF. This video series has been walking through the evaluation plan checklist for ATE proposals created by Evaluate to identify the components of a high quality evaluation plan. This video is going to take a look at the next section, evaluation questions. Evaluation questions serve as the foundation for your evaluation, so it's important to consider them carefully. In this section of your evaluation plan, make sure to list the questions the evaluation will address these are overarching questions about the project's quality, impact, or effectiveness that the evaluation will answer based on evidence. We're talking three to seven questions, not 20 or 30. The questions should really be about the big picture, not about specific counts or measures. You want to be sure questions in are included about both the project's implementation and outcomes. And of course, it's important that the evaluation is clearly aligned with the project's goals and activities. So what really makes a good evaluation question? Well, evaluation questions should first of all be evaluative. I know this sounds redundant, but a non-evaluative question might ask, how many students did the project serve? This question is asking about a single data point. If the answer to that question was, for example, the project served 100 students. Could we really determine if this was a good or bad number? Not necessarily based on this question. Therefore, this question is not inherently evaluative. If we rephrase our question to ask, what was the project's impact on project enrollment? We could determine whether the pro program enrollment increased, decreased, or if it remained the same since the project was implemented. This type of answer is more meaningful and more evaluative than just saying the project served 100 students. Second, good evaluation questions should be reasonable. This means that the questions are linked to what the program can practically and realistically achieve or influence. For example, asking whether the project increased manufacturing employment in the entire state may be unreasonable expectation of the project given time and resources. We want to avoid evalu evaluation questions that are outside of the scope or resources of a project. Instead, we might ask, to what, extent did students, to what extent did students served by the project find employment in the manufacturing sector? This question is more suitable to the expectations of the project. Third, good evaluation questions should be specific. Questions should clearly identify what will be investigated in the evaluation. For example, if an evaluation question asks, did the project increase instructor effectiveness? We're left asking, what is instructor effectiveness and how is that really defined? We don't want vague questions that are stated in overly broad terms. This introduces unnecessary confusion into an evaluation. Instead, we could be more specific and ask, to what extent did participating instructors increase their knowledge about nanotechnology? This question more clearly states the expectation of project outcomes. Fourth, good evaluation questions should be answerable. By this, we mean that the question should be able to be answered given accessible data and resource constraints. If, for example, we ask, to what extent does the project affect long-term persistence in STEM careers? This would require long-term tracking and follow-up with students over years, potentially decades. This would not be feasible given a three-year ATE grant. Instead, we might focus on a more short-term outcome, such as to what extent does the project affect students' interest in pursuing a future career in STEM? It is much more feasible to answer this evaluation question within the constraints of an average ATE grant. 
Finally, when considering a set of evaluation questions, you want to make sure that they are complete in thoroughly addressing the purpose of the evaluation and evaluation users' information needs. All important aspects of a project's activities and intended outcomes should be addressed. Mapping evaluation questions to a logic model can help ensure completeness in your evaluation questions. If you're not already familiar, a logic model is a great way of visually communicating a project's activities and outcomes. Logic models aren't required for the ATE program, but they are a good way to show the overall design of a project and are really useful for evaluation planning. So here you can see a few thumbnail images of various logic models from ATE and other STEM education projects. So let's take a quick look at a general project logic model. You can see here I've grayed out the details in each of the boxes just so we can focus on how a logic model can help frame your evaluation questions without getting into a lot of the details about logic model just for the sake of time. So as you can see across the top, this logic model identifies the project's activities. So this is what a project does, creates, or delivers, as well as the short-term, mid-term, and long-term outcomes. So these are the changes that the project intends to bring about through the activities that they do. So evaluation questions about and activities can help a project determine whether they are achieving their targets in terms of measures such as maybe student numbers, diversity, or satisfaction. It's also important to ask questions about the project's strengths and weaknesses to make sure that the evaluation is gathering information that can be used by the project to enhance its quality. The evaluation should also ask questions about short-term outcomes. So what changes do you expect to see directly after the activities are carried out? And then what are the expected consequences of those changes? Asking about short-term and mid-term outcomes can make a larger argument about the effectiveness of your project rather than simply asking questions about activity counts or satisfaction. It can often be difficult to adequately ask about long-term outcomes of a project. These might be the intended consequences that are 10 years down the road, a much longer timeline than our evaluation. Therefore, you might not always ask evaluation questions about long-term outcomes. So as you can see, our evaluation questions span all columns of our logic model, asking questions about both implementation and outcomes. So in your evaluation, you want to make sure you want to make the strongest argument possible about the effectiveness of your project. So consider what types of information would convince you as a scientist whether the project has been successful or not. As an evaluator, I would also want to find out if stakeholders had any additional questions they want to have answered, and I would go ahead and include those in the evaluation questions as well. So I know we covered this logic model part pretty fast, but Evaluate has a number of resources on logic models and evaluation questions to help, put, to help you put this into practice. So if you want to create a logic model for your ATE project, check out our logic model template for ATE projects, which includes question prompts and examples. And if you want to learn more about how to integrate a logic model into a funding proposal, check out the recording, slides, and handouts from a webinar we did a couple years ago on that very topic. For more information about what makes a good evaluation question, be sure to check out the Evaluation Questions Checklist, which defines criteria for good evaluation questions, as well as points out what you should avoid when it comes to evaluation questions. In the next video, we'll be talking about organizing your data section.